Now we will discuss what is the need for the separation of mixture. So, before we discuss the various uh, uh, needs, let us discuss some of the uh, examples like Arhar dal, you must be fond of eating Arhar dal, it is uh, uh, commonly cooked in the kitchen and you must be fond of eating Arhar dal, but uh, you may not be aware that along with Arhar dal grows Khesri dal. And if this Khesri dal mixes with Arhar dal and it is consumed for a long time, then it causes paralysis. Then mustard oil generally contains argimon oil. Now, argimon oil should be uh, separated from mustard oil, but if it contains uh, mustard oil contains argimon oil and it is consumed, it may cause nervous disorders. Then water from abundant wells, abundant wells which are not uh, used, which are uh, not used for a long time, those are called abundant wells. So, if water from abundant wells is used for uh, drinking purposes or for cooking the food, it may contain certain poisonous substances which may cause serious diseases. Then wheat from wheat uh, fields may contain the seeds of weeds and straw which uh, may be harmful, which may be it may the weeds may be harmful because they are mixed with the wheat. Now milkman sometimes what he does to increase the volume of the milk, he adds to it water and water he may take from any source, it, uh, he may use the pond water to uh, add to the milk to increase its volume for its his own profit. The, this adulterated milk may then contain harmful uh, bacteria and germs which may cause very serious diseases. Rice if it is stored for a long time more than a year, it may contain insects and eggs which are harmful. And also uh, in the villages if uh, there is a pond and if that pond water is used for drinking purposes and for cooking purposes it may contain some bacteria and germs which may be harmful and which may cause various diseases. So, that is why the uh, there is a need to separate the constituents of a mixture. Like now, let us discuss the various points uh, why separation of a mixture is necessary. So, you can see here to remove undesirable constituents, the unwanted constituents should be separated. So, that useful components only can be used as we have discussed earlier it is very very necessary and also to obtain useful constituents which are useful to us and we can throw away the uh, components which are not useful to obtain pure substances. So, separation of mixture is very necessary because in the nature also many uh, substances are not in the pure form and they need to be uh, separated into useful components, constituents and uh, the useless constituents which are of no use can be removed and thrown away. So, let us now discuss various methods of separation of mixtures. First of all, we will discuss uh, methods of separation of insoluble uh, solids from a mixture. A very uh, simple first of all mixture we are taking mixture of iron fillings and sulphur. Now, iron is easily attracted by a magnet. So, mixture of iron fillings and sulphur can be separated by using a magnet. Uh, when a magnet is brought near the mixture, iron fillings will get attracted towards the magnet and sulphur is left behind and this is how easily we can separate a mixture of iron fillings and sulphur. So, but this method can only be used if one of the constituent is magnetic in nature. Now, the second method is hand picking. Now, sometimes it happens that wheat, rice, pulses has small stones in it which need to be removed and this can only be done in uh, by using hand, hand picking. By picking with the hand this can be done removing of the stones, but uh, the substance uh, the constituent which has to be removed should be in small quantity. So, that it can easily be removed. Now, you can also uh, perform an activity if you buy some uh, wheat from uh, uh, your market and uh, spread it over uh, a white cloth and see 
but all things are present in there in addition to the wheat grains. You will find certain stones also and certain other things uh, different than the wheat grains. Uh, try to separate wheat grain from all the stones and other things which are not required, which are not useful and though, so you will come to know how hand picking can be used to separate the useful constituents from the use, uh, uh, useless uh, constituents. The third method is threshing. Now, threshing is the method of separating the grains from its stalks. Now, when the crop uh, is fully grown, it is harvested, harvested means it is cut. And after cutting, uh, you must have seen in the fields, the bundles of uh, rice and wheat lie in the field. And uh, you must have uh, been surprised to see why this is happening. What happens actually, these uh, bundles of uh, wheat and rice, when they are uh, placed in the field, they are kept there uh, under the sunlight to dry. When they get dried in the sunlight, they are, the bundles are hit on the hard walls of mud or any other hard substance, they are hit very strongly, so that uh, grains separate from the stalk. Because there are so many grains on any, every stalk, by hand picking grains cannot be separated from the stalk. That is a very tedious method, difficult method and very uh, time consuming method. So, this is the method which is adopted. Another method also is used by the farmers that uh, they uh, place, uh, spread the, these uh, stalks on the ground and the bullocks, they walk on these uh, uh, stalks. So, in, in circle and the, the, this is how uh, grains separate from the stalks. So, these are the methods which were used earlier. Nowadays, many farmers use uh, mechanical threshers uh, by which these uh, stalks are hammered mechanically and uh, uh, grains get separated from the uh, stalks. Now, once the grains uh, are separated from the stalks, Another method to separate husk from the grains, winnowing is used. Winnowing is the process which is uh, used to separate husk from the grains. Now, in this process what happens? Grain is mixed with very light particles of husk which cannot be separated easily. Now, for this uh, uh, technique is adopted by the farmers. The farmer stands on a platform and uh, what he does? He allows the mixture of husk and grain to fall down from the height. Now, the wheat grain is uh, heavy, it uh, falls down vertically and forms a separate heap just uh, below and uh, these husk particles are very light in weight, they are blown away by the wind and form a separate heap. So, this is how wheat grains uh, uh, are collected separately and husk is separately collected and this is how by the process of winnowing husk can be separated from the grain. Just now we studied about uh, threshing and winnowing, the old methods, uh, how threshing and winnowing is done and mostly now machines are used to do these processes and uh, you can also perform this process of winnowing at home uh, just to see what happens during winnowing. Uh, you can mix uh, a wheat grains uh, with the, the dried uh, straw and uh, dried leaves and uh, take it in a plate and uh, put a table fan on the table and switch it on and then uh, tilt this plate uh, containing the mixture of wheat grain and the straw and the leaves so that the mixture falls down. And, uh, now you will see yourself that uh, wheat grain uh, vertically falls down and collects there and uh, these uh, straw and the leaves they are blown away by the wind of the fan. This is how winnowing occurs. So, you can perform this activity at home with the help of a mother and uh, uh, now we discuss another method of separation of mixture that is sieving. You must have seen your mother sieving the uh, wheat flour with the help of a sieve. 
and uh, by sieving you must be uh, uh, able to see that uh, the fine uh, particles of the wheat flour passes through the sieve and the big, bigger particles of the chaff remains on the sieve. So, sieving is the process of separating the solids of different sizes with the help of a sieve. Also, in a, a wheat flour mill, you, if you happen to visit, you will find that by using the sieves, wheat grains are grains. Wheat grains are separated from very small stones with the help of sieve. The small stones uh, uh, pass through the holes of the sieve and the grains remain on the sieve. Also at the construction site, if you happen to visit, you will find that there are big sieves uh, uh, installed there over which sand is uh, sieved uh, to separate it from the small stones and small pebbles. Uh, sand is uh, particles are very small, so sand particles pass through the sieve and the small stones and uh, straw and uh, pebbles remain on the sieve. So, this uh, sand uh, when it is separated from these pebbles and uh, straw and uh, stones can easily be used for the construction work. So, sieving is a very simple method uh, at, uh, separating the tea leaves from the tea also can be used done with the help of a sieve the strainer in the kitchen that you have, uh, must be seeing every day. Now, uh, you can also perform an activity yourself just to uh, know much better about the sieving process. You can take some wheat flour, request your mother to uh, perform this activity, take the sieve from her and uh, in her supervision you can perform this activity and mix it with some pulses and try to uh, use the sieve to separate the wheat flour from the pulses. Now, what will happen? You can very well think the wheat flour has smaller particles. So, wheat flour will pass through the sieve and the pulses have bigger particles. So, it will remain on the sieve. So, you can separate wheat flour from the pulses with the help of the sieve. Now, mix some common salt in the wheat flour and now use the same sieve to separate wheat flour from the common salt. Now, what happens? Are you able to separate wheat flour from the common salt? Now, you will be very surprised to see that both the wheat flour and the common salt passes through the sieve, the holes of the sieve and nothing is left behind on the sieve. Why? Why does this happen? Because both the wheat flour and the common salt are very small in size. So, what is the condition required for sieving? That uh, the two particles of the mixture, the, the particles of the uh, two constituents of the mixture should be of different size. The size of the particle of one of the constituent should be bigger than the size of the whole of the sieve and uh, the size of the particle of the another constituent should be smaller than the size of the whole of the sieve. Then only sieving process will be uh, useful. So, uh, do perform this activity so that you learn more about uh, these separation processes. Now, let us discuss uh, some other method, very interesting one. Now, uh, you can, uh, this uh, activity also can easily be performed. Uh, take water in a beaker and mix some sand and clay in it, stir it to dissolve sand and clay in water. But it is insoluble, it will not dissolve. So, keep it on the table for some times. Now, sand and clay is heavy. So, what will happen? It will settle down, right? And it is insoluble. So, it will not dissolve also. Now, this uh, settling down of heavier insoluble substance is called sedimentation. And this heavy insoluble substance which has settled down is called sediment. And the clear water which has remained above this sediment is called superratent liquid. Now, you can separate this clear water from this sediment, this uh, sediment which is of sand and clay. How? You can take another clean uh, glass or beaker and with the help of a rod, glass rod, very carefully, slowly 
without uh, disturbing the sediment pour transfer this clear liquid with the help of this rod into another beaker. And this process of transferring the clear liquid into another be uh, beaker without uh, disturbing the sediment is called decantation. So, by sedimentation and decantation the insoluble heavier substance can be separated from water. Also you can again you can perform this activity by collecting the muddy water or taking the water and mixing some sand in it and then you can separate it in the same manner uh, this uh, mud or sand from the water. Now, uh, we, we have studied in the previous chapter about the immiscible liquids. Immiscible liquids are those if you can uh, uh, recall which uh, do not dissolve in each other like uh, kerosene oil and water. If you mix kerosene oil with water what happens? Mix shake it well what will happen? Kerosene oil forms a upper layer and water forms the lower layer. So, how to separate? Uh, kerosene oil from water uh, for this purpose a separating funnel can be used. Now, this separating funnel is uh, filled with mixture of uh, kerosene oil and water and uh, it is allowed to stand for some times. So, you will see that kerosene oil clearly forms an upper layer and water forms a lower layer. It is fitted with a stop cock also. Now, when the, uh, after some times what uh, place a beaker below the separating funnel and open the stop cock. Very slowly this uh, allow the water to collect in the beaker and when this level comes up to this place close the stop cock and remove the beaker and uh, now place another clean beaker below this uh, separating funnel and again open the stop cock to collect the kerosene oil. This is how very easily you can separate kerosene oil from water or any uh, two immiscible liquids can be separated by using separating funnel. Another method uh, used for separation of substances is loading. Now, let us see what is loading. Let us first of all see the activity. Uh, Mud, water is taken in which some mud, sand and soil is added and it is taken in a beaker and it is allowed to stand and then alum, uh, fitkari in Hindi it is called, is suspended in the water with the help of thread. You will see that the mud, sand, soil all settles down uh, very fast like this, it settles down, mud settles down. So, this is mud, sediment and uh, uh, what is loading then? You can see in this also uh, solid uh, particles which are insoluble in water get suspended. So, it is also sedimentation. Now, loading uh, then how is loading different than sedimentation? In, in fact, loading is the process of increasing the rate of sedimentation by adding a chemical. So, uh, rate of sedimentation is increased and how it is increased? By making the uh, insoluble solid particles heavy, so that they settle down rapidly. So, that is loading. Now, uh, uh, example of loading you can see during uh, rains. Rain water as you know it is uh, the very pure form of water, it is distilled water in fact because it is formed by evaporation and then condensation. The water from all the water bodies, rivers, seas uh, continuously evaporate and water vapors are light in weight so they rise up and uh, they form the clouds. And these tiny water droplets when they join with one another they form bigger water droplets and they fall down as rain. So, it is distilled water because only pure water goes up and when rain water falls down these water drops attach themselves with the dust and become more heavy and then they fall down. So, they clean the atmosphere also. So, rain water is uh, this is a falling of rain 
this is another example of loading. So, uh, this loading can be used for uh, increasing the rate of sedimentation, sedimentation becomes uh, faster. Another method for uh, separation of substances is filtration. You must have seen in the house uh, that when tea is uh, boiled with the tea leaves, the to separate tea leaves from what uh, tea a strainer is used. Now, suppose if you uh, prepare the tea, your mother prepares the tea and uh, keep it in two cups. One cup you keep it for some times and uh, other cup you uh, filter with the help of a strainer. Now, in the first cup where you have just uh, allowed it to stand for some times, tea leaves settle down, try to pour the upper clear tea into another cup. What happens? Some of the liquid also comes along with the tea leaves and now when you filter it with the help of a strainer, then all the tea leaves are left on the strainer and only clear tea goes down in the cup, it collects in the cup. So, which one is the best method? Uh, sedimentation and decantation or filtration? So, you will obviously say filtration is a better method to separate suspended solid insoluble substances from water. Now, let us see how is filtration done. First of all, uh, this uh, apparatus you can see a clamp stand. Uh, with the help of this clamp stand, funnel is uh, fitted, and uh, below the funnel is uh, kept a uh, empty beaker, and another beaker is taken in which chalk powder is mixed with water. Now, chalk powder does not dissolve in water, right. Now, then a round filter paper is taken. This is a round filter paper or even if it is a, a square filter paper, does not matter. Fold it from the center, it becomes like this. Again fold it. How does it become? It will become like a cone apply some water to moisten the cone of uh, filter paper and then open it so that three sides of the filter paper remain on one side and one side remains on the other side and open the cone and then fit it in the funnel right uh, some water has to be applied so that it sticks to the funnel and now this uh, beaker containing chalk powder is taken it is tilted over this glass rod with the help of this glass rod, slowly this uh, chalk powder mixture is poured into the funnel. Now, what will happen? This chalk powder mixture will pass through the filter paper and uh, clear water collects in the empty beaker which is called filtrate and uh, the chalk powder will remain on the uh, filter paper cone and it is called residue and you can see that this uh, water is uh, not having any chalk powder in it, it is very clear water which you have got. Now, if you have to uh, suppose uh, filter uh, a large volume of uh, the mixture uh, in uh, less time, then other substances also can be used like cotton. If uh, uh, impure water, water containing suspended impurities, insoluble impurities is passed through cotton, glass wool or charcoal or sand, then also uh, clear water will pass out leaving behind the solid impurities. So, this is how filtration can be done. There are uh, uh, other cases also filtration used at home like uh, fruit juices, vegetable juices also you filter with the help of strainer to remove the solid pulp and the seeds that you filter and uh, also uh, the water which you drink that also you filter. How? In the schools and in the homes are there are uh, fitted the water purifiers in which uh, there is a porous pot of ceramics, water gets filtered, it uh, solid impurities get uh, removed from it and uh, in some cases ultraviolet uh, light is used to 
uh, kill the germs and bacteria present in the uh, water and also there are certain uh, purifiers in which uh, uh, resins are used, resins which uh, remove the solid impurities and also you have seen RO purifiers, RO purifiers which are used at home nowadays uh, in which reverse osmosis is the process used. Now these RO purifiers are fitted with semi permeable membrane which uh, do, do not allow certain particles to pass through it. Now uh, you will uh, study uh, osmosis, reverse osmosis later on but uh, by using this semi permeable uh, membrane what happens only clear water passes through the semi permeable membrane uh, leaving behind all the dissolved salts in it and then it can be. Uh, used for drinking purposes uh, because it removes all the uh, dissolved salts in it. And uh, the water which is supplied to the various houses in the city is first of all purified and the, uh, this in this type of uh, arrangement you can see the river water is supplied to the various houses in the city. Now this river water ha has very uh, a large number of uh, suspended solid uh, insoluble impurities and also germs and bacteria. So this water must be purified first of all and then only it should be supplied to the various houses in the city. Now a, a brief account of this uh, how the purification take place let us uh, study about this. So river water is first uh, pumped with the help of pumping. Uh, technique uh, into the sedimentation tank where the solid impurities uh, get settled down sedimentation takes place and then the water is passed through the tank containing sand and gravel where the water gets filtered leaving behind the solid impurities and then to another tank fitted with sand that is called sand filter the name of the tank where again filtration occurs to remove the solid impurities and then it is uh, passed through to another tank which is called a chlorinating tank because uh, still the water contains uh, harmful bacteria and germs and which have to be killed with the help of fluorine gas or may, may be bleaching powder is added in some cases. So which uh, kills the bacteria and germs present in water and then the clean water is then stored in the overhead tanks from which it is pumped to the various houses in the city. And also the, uh, in the sewers, uh, the sewage water which comes, it is also filtered with the help of very big filters which filters the big solid impurities and uh, the poly bags so that if uh, they do not uh, do the choking of the sewers. And, uh, uh, it is very much uh, advisable to you that take precaution uh, not, not to throw the solid objects, uh, solid substances and the poly bags on the street because all these uh, solid substances and the poly bags are carried to the sewers with the help of rain water. So be careful not to throw anything on the roads, in the streets and try to keep your city clean so that sewers do not get choked with these uh, poly bags and uh, bigger solid objects. Also you must have seen your mother making uh, paneer cheese at home by cuddling of the milk, by squeezing some lemon juice into the milk which is boiling and what happens the milk will curdle and how to separate it, how to separate the cheese from the uh, curdled milk by using a fine uh, cloth through which water passes and the cheese remains behind. So that is another method of filtration used at home uh, by using a uh, fine uh, cloth. Now uh, we will discuss about uh, the separation of uh, the impurities or solids which are soluble in water, how to remove them. Till now we have studied the insoluble solid substances, how can they be removed from water and uh, if a substance is dissolved in water, how to separate it from water like uh, common salt. If you put it in water, it will dissolve, then it cannot be uh, separated by filtration, then how can it be separated? 
uh, let us uh, study this first of all by doing this activity what happens uh, in this uh, bowl is taken the common salt dissolved in water it forms a solution and this uh, solution of common salt in water is also called brine so wherever you hear this word brine you must understand this is the name given to common salt solution in water now when the, uh, this solution is taken common salt solution or brine is taken in this bowl and it is placed over the tripod stand fitted with a wire gauge so that uh, uh, the bowl glass bowl does not break and then heated with the help of a gas burner what will happen after some times think water will start changing into water vapors due to the heat and this process is called evaporation change of a liquid into its vapors is called evaporation so go on heating till the water evaporates leaving behind the salt and this is how we can separate so uh, we can separate water and we can get the common salt so what is evaporation evaporation is the process of changing a liquid into its vapors and also this evaporation can be done without heating also now think over it how how can it be done it can be done by taking the brine solution or common salt solution in water in a shallow dish in a plate and it is kept in sunlight for few hours keep on watching and uh, you will come to know that the uh, volume of water is uh, decreasing and after a few hours you will find that whole of the water has evaporated and leaving uh, it has left behind the salt so this is how soluble solid impurity can be separated from the liquid by evaporation uh, common salt as you know uh, it is used in the kitchen it makes the dishes tasty without common salt you won't be Uh, liking uh, uh, to eat the food you will not uh, relish the food now how is the common salt obtained from where do you get it as you know sea water is salty it contains a large number of dissolved salts in it and uh, common salt is also present in that and uh, common salt is present in more percentage in uh, water so near the sea shore Uh, shallow pits are made in which the sea water is filled and it, it is allowed to stand for a, uh, many days due to the heat the water evaporates leaving behind the salt now this salt is impure which is obtained it contains some other salts also and common salt also it is impure having uh, so many impurities and uh, it is called rock salt then it is purified purified it is sent to the uh, factory where it is purified it is dissolved in water and uh, it is heated to dissolve the salts in it and uh, then it is filtered the hot solution is filtered and uh, after filtering because all the impurities will be left behind this uh, hot uh, solution is then allowed to cool and then common salt crystallizes it forms it separates from water and this process of uh, separating a soluble solid from the liquid is known as crystallization so crystals of common salt separate and this process is called crystallization so by this uh, common salt in the pure form is obtained from sea water so uh, evaporation is a very useful method uh, to separate the soluble solid substances from a liquid and uh, now here but we could not obtain water water got evaporated how to obtain water also and the soluble solid substance also Uh, so let let's for a first of all see this activity and then we will uh, understand how it can be done a kettle is taken and in which it is half filled with the brine solution or common salt solution in water it is placed over a gas uh, burner over a tripod stand fitted with a wire gauge and uh, then it is heated and also a frying pan is taken in which ice cubes are filled and then it is uh, placed uh, just in this uh, in front of this spout uh, where from where the steam is coming out what is steam the water vapors in front of it now what will happen when this uh, hot water vapors or steam uh, come in contact with 
the cold surface of the frying pan, these water vapors condense, these water vapors change into water drops which are then collected in a glass which is kept just below it. So, this uh, condensed water we get and on continuous heating what will happen all water will evaporate and will change into liquid water and common salt will be left behind. This is the method by which we both up, uh, we obtain both uh, common salt also and water also and this process is called condensation. So, what is condensation? Changing of uh, uh, vapors or changing of a gas into a liquid on cooling it is called condensation. So, water vapors change into uh, water by the process of condensation. Now, in uh, another uh, same method in fact, in which both evaporation and condensation are included is known as distillation. Now, distillation is a process in which uh, evaporation also occurs, condensation also occurs. First uh, evaporation and then followed by condensation that is called distillation and uh, here we have done it separately, the first evaporation and then condensation. But with the help of this apparatus uh, which is which you can get in the lab uh, by fitting it in this manner, let us see what are the various uh, types of apparatus we are using. Here a clamp stand is taken with the help of this clamp stand this uh, uh, glass uh, flask and which is called round bottomed flask. This has a round bottom that is why it is called round bottomed flask is fitted with the help of this clamp stand over the uh, tripod stand fitted with a wire gauge uh, below which uh, is placed a gas burner. Now, uh, from the side a water condenser is fitted. Now, you can see what is a water condenser. Water condenser contains a inner tube made of glass fitted with a outer jacket of glass right and uh, through this outer jacket continuously water flows. This uh, uh, tube it is connected to the tap water through which water continuously goes in and through this uh, water out where I have written water continuously goes out. So, this uh, uh, keeps the inner tube cool throughout. Now, let us see what, how uh, and then yes, here a empty beaker is placed below the other end. The brine solution is taken here in this uh, round to bottom flask, it is heated. What will happen? Water will evaporate, water will change into vapors and water vapors will rise up and through this glass tube they will go inside this condenser. Now, here in the outer jacket because the water is continuously flowing, it keeps this tube cool and cools the water vapors due to which these water vapors condense and change into water drops and so it can be collected in the beaker which is kept below. So, now we get the distilled water which is the purest form of water. Salt will be left behind, salt will not uh, condense, uh, evaporate, salt is left behind and water we can get. So, this is another method of uh, distillation by which we can uh, purify water and uh, also this uh, distillation process can be used to separate miscible liquids. You know now what are miscible liquids which dissolve in each other. If two miscible liquids have a boiling point uh, uh, little different, uh, suppose there is a difference in the boiling point of these two liquids of uh, 15 to 20 degree centigrade. So, in that case with the help of distillation these two liquids which are dissolving in each other which are miscible with each other can be separated by heating the mixture in uh, such type of uh, apparatus and uh, heating is done. The liquid which has a lower boiling point will change into vapors first of all and uh, the temperature is not allowed to uh, go over the boiling point of the liquid which boils first. So, water vapors will rise up, will pass through the condenser and will be collected in the uh, beaker. 
So, the liquid with lower boiling point will be collected and the liquid with the higher boiling point will remain in the flask. So, this is how we can separate miscible liquids also with the which have different boiling points.